Right at the beginning of the story, we see a young man called Nero being crowned as prince, being the fifth and youngest emperor of this half Roman place, having been 17 years old, and a very common thing in that place at that time, it was the fact that a bunch of slaves were trapped in dark cells, eating only pig wash, and for them, washing time was special, as there was even a fight over eating it. During the fight over the delicious wash, there was a single slave who didn't care about eating, and obviously he is the protagonist of this story. He has a really crazy name to say, Cestus, I don't know how to pronounce it, I'll just call him boy. While everyone fights for food, a guy called Rocco, with a very stocky body that doesn't seem to go hungry, finds a way to stop the kid's hunger, and he advises them to share this food. All this while Cestus looked at him. Rocco goes to the boy, and together, the two share a brief moment, yes, Rocco made Cestus accept to eat this brown mud, and this peaceful moment lasted until a guard interrupted, and asked everyone to leave. All these slaves are taken to an arena, and are told that they have been selected to become boxers, and now they will all have to fight, and emerge victorious. Unfortunately, Cestus ended up being put in a fight against Rocco, and when you see this you immediately think, wow, the poor kid is going to take a beating, and as incredible as it may seem, Cestus opens his mouth, saying he doesn't want to hit his friend, but he has no choice, he has to fight, but the boy didn't want to, his trainer, Zuffer, aware that the boy is not yet used to fighting, intervened, and said that he has to fight, because this it's the only option he has in his life. After that we see the two boys, they are forced to put on hard gloves, full of metal and start a fight, Rocco, even though he is a great friend of Cestus, does not intend to go easy on him, and he encourages his friend to do the same, and he only said that, because he can see that his friend's posture is wrong, and apparently he seems quite nervous, so we see Rocco advancing towards Cestus, however instantly the guy is surprised to see himself on the ground, with his face dripping with blood, yes, Cestus is a very strong boxer, and this leaves everyone shocked, at that moment the boy is visibly disturbed by having hit his friend, he assumed a defensive posture, dodging his friend's attacks, and maintaining his internal dilemma of not punching his friend, as his friend was made to punch, however, this fight has to be finished, because the longer the boy remains standing, the longer his friend will continue to suffer the Cestus, the boy ends the fight immediately, applying a few blows to Rocco's stomach, in the end Rocco admits that he was beaten by someone he thought was much weaker, he recognizes the boy's strength, and his big ego of being a very strong guy now no longer exists, however, this sweet moment of recognition lasts very little, as Rocco ends up being pierced by several arrows, and soon after he dies in the arms of the boy who defeated him, yes, in this empire the destiny of a male slave is to fight, and no slave is allowed to lose, and due to his victory the boy ends up receiving a mark from Juliano Valens, this mark Mark serves to show his property, yes, the boy now belongs to the Valens family, and I thought the V was for victory, this guy explains to his slaves that he is merciful, and is willing to grant freedom to each one of them after they obtain a hundred victories, and these lines arouse admiration in the eyes of all the boys, and this opportunity he gave to all of them is also basically a matter of life and death, so the boy begins to train rigorously with Zuffer, and while they were training Zuffer realized that this boy is very fragile, and that he would not be able to resist even a powerful blow from his enemies, Zuffer realizes that the boy will not he can't even take down his opponents, as he is very weak, but Zuffer believes that the boy will become a great boxer. He sees the possibility that the little one will become the best boxer in the world, he dreams a lot. In fact, he only has all this hope because the boy's sharp movements and his movements are so fast that he believes that no opponent will be able to surpass him, and that is why he decided to be the boy's master, so that he can show the child the correct way to use all that talent of being small, skinny, faster. That's why he decided to be his teacher, so that he can show the correct way to use his talent. But soon after that Zuffer is ridiculed by the other trainers for being a proficient, they all say that it is pathetic that a man who was once known as the undefeated Logo can't even take care of himself now. He pays no attention to these criticisms, informs Cestus about a fight that is approaching in an arena in Rome, and it will be watched by the emperor himself. On the way to the arena, Zuffer teaches the boy some things, saying that he needs to win so he can achieve his own future. After that, we see Cestus roaming the arena's corridors, completely lost due to the complex architecture of the place. A blonde boy named Ruska points him in the right direction, and they become good friends after this brief encounter, and while waiting for his fight, the Cestus helps a fellow slave and fighter, who warns him about fighting adult opponents, informing him that children like them have no chance of defeating adults, and fate now does not seem to be on Cestus' side, as his next opponent turns out to be a tall, adult man. The emperor was not excited about this fight, he was sure that little Cestus would be crushed to death, due to the difference in size between the two. Despite this, Cestus manages to defeat the adult very easily, without taking a single hit. Everyone is surprised, including Nero, as he didn't want to expect that the smallest would beat a giant. Poor guy, he never read the Bible. However, this moment of joy was short-lived, as the spectators decided that the little boxer's opponent should die, having lost shamefully to a skinny child. Cestus begs for mercy, he doesn't want his enemy to die, he does what must be done, raising his left thumb towards the emperor. Then, the dowager empress, Nero's mother, immediately ordered the death of both of them, all because she saw that Cestus, a mere slave, was trying to manipulate the Roman emperor's decision. Fortunately, Demetrius, the chief Roman general, manages to calm her down, stating that at a time like this, 
the emperor must show his stature to the people calmly judging the situation. Consequently, the ugly adult is deleted from the anime, and Cestus is reprimanded by Zuffer for his careless attitude. He was also given the explanation that he cannot afford to sympathize with an enemy, and to ensure his safety, he only needs to think about his survival. If one day he wants his enemies to be spared, he will have to open the way to victory using his fists, thus winning everyone's affection. This repression ended up being interrupted by an invitation made by the emperor to our skinny boy. The emperor greeted Cestus with joy, expressing his satisfaction with the wonderful fight that Cestus fought. While listening to the praise, Cestus was surprised by the fact that the emperor was not an old man, but a young man his own age. At that moment, Zuffer introduces himself as a Cestus trainer to the empress, and she seems to recognize him as a man who fought Demetorius years ago, to be specific 10 years ago. The two men have a moment of serious looks at each other, remembering the final fight they had. Meanwhile, Cestus looked at the fighter with fear, after all, it was this man who ripped off his master's leg in a fight. After that, Demetorius reveals that he prepared a special fight in celebration of the newly appointed emperor's coronation, which ended up being a match between two highly skilled boxers, one of them being Ruska Demetorius, Demetorius' own son. Everyone in the audience can feel the intensity and sheer strength of the big boxers, and before the fight even starts, everyone is cheering for them, and Ruska quickly takes down his opponent, using his own special combat techniques. Everyone quickly realizes that despite his age, he is a veteran in the art of combat. Nero is very surprised by this new style of combat, and Demetorius explains everything. This type of combat is called punk region. I don't know how to say it. Flame, I just know that it is based on wrestling and merges with the eastern arts of its own soldier. This combat method uses strikes, throws, fighting techniques and is therefore much more deadly than boxing. Cestus distrusts Ruska and his unique fighting style, and soon ends up wishing he was never on his opposite side in an arena. The next day, Cestus wanders around the royal residence with his chains. The invitation is from the emperor, when suddenly Ruska greets him, informing Cestus that he also received an invitation from Emperor Nero himself. Zuffer informs Cestus that he will be waiting for him outside the royal building. After all, he doesn't want to meddle in these matters. After talking about this, Cestus follows Ruska inside, the two walk through the garden together, and Cestus notices the beauty of the place, especially the vegetation. After all, he is not used to this kind of sight. Out of nowhere, he stops to hear a sound he has never heard in his life, to which Ruska explains that what he is listening to is the famous song. However, Cestus has no idea what this is, and Cestus, being a slave, had never heard the sound. This sound reminds him of all the delicate moments of his life. Yes, this song is very beautiful, completely different from the battle music he always used to listen to. He was just used to hearing the sound of the arenas, and for no reason at all he started crying. Nero, upon seeing Cestus crying, is enchanted by this emotional scene. After all, he has never seen anyone be moved by music. This makes him very happy and anxious to provoke more exciting reactions from Cestus, and that's why he decides to cancel all his commitments so he can focus completely on this. However, the Empress was not satisfied with this, and continuing the conversation with the two fighters, the Emperor asks why the two took part in such terrible fights. First, Ruska responds, saying that his dream was to be a guard, following in his father's footsteps. Cestus says that he wants to be a free man, and no longer be trapped in his chains, and that the only way he can achieve this is by using his fists. Meanwhile, Demetorius ends up taking Zuffer into the royal building, so that he can witness an interesting event, and the event was the following, Cestus was like taking a beating from Ruska. Yes, the Empress, irritated that Nero had neglected his responsibilities, demanded a fight between two boxers, a fight that Ruska also didn't want to participate in, but unfortunately he had to fight. Upon seeing this scene, Zuffer regrets not having accompanied Cestus. After all, because he didn't go with the minor, the minor ended up being put in this situation, all due to the Empress's temperament. In the midst of these events, Demetorius warns his son not to hold back. Thus, we see the two boxers taking a stance for battle, and the fight begins with Cestus relying on his speed to land a blow, but Ruska dodges them all, always being one step ahead of his enemy. In the middle of the fight, he hugs Cestus, and then is easily knocked to the ground by Ruska. So, Ruska has started a stranglehold towards the sky, and our skinny slave is not willing to give up, thus making the situation worse for him. Zuffer, bothered by his student's pain, tries to intervene, but he is immediately stopped by Demetorius. However, Emperor Nero ends up putting an end to this violence by exploding and shouting about how he never wanted to be an emperor in the first place. He will only take on the Empress's doll, and upon hearing this the Empress began to cry, showing her weak side, which left everyone shocked. If they could they would have closed their eyes and ears to not have seen the scene, but unfortunately everything was heard. After she runs away, Ruska is scolded by his father for not ending Cestus' career. After being scolded, we see that Ruska carries a strong desire to kill his own father because he is fed up with all his cruelty. A while later we see Cestus saddened by his loss. Elsewhere we see that Valen's training center ended up being burned down, and all the slaves in the facility ended up being auctioned off, including Cestus, and he is now in the custody of a different slave trader. In this new place he sees the strongest gladiator, he is practicing rigorous training, dragging himself with weight on his arms and legs. Zuffer opens his mouth and explains that this is an efficient training 
training method which provides a defense incredible to the person Cestus keeps looking at the guy. As he trains tirelessly for hours and lasts from his classes with Zuffer, they wonder about their own goals and the length of their classes, and what these classes would do to for him to reach, or I. Fell in the night while looking for a bathroom to relieve himself. Cestus ends up seeing Sabina. She is the most beautiful woman in this place. Any man on this earth who sees her ends up instantly falling in love, and she had left to do some things, and she wanted to come back there by surprise, but Cestus ruined everything. The woman asks who the boy is, he introduces himself as a slave and then asks who she is, and because he doesn't know her, the woman quickly understands that he is not from this place, and while one takes him to the other, Cestus ended up blushing like a child, and with the arrival of a random extra, Cestus ends up discovering what an important person she is. The next day we see that guy who was training hard non-stop, Emden, he asks his training partners to fight with him, but the fight ends up being interrupted by Sabina, who ridicules Emden for his persistence in training and winning strength, but in response Emden tells her that he will keep the promise they made, to which Sabina pretends not to remember what that promise is. She pretended not to have any promises with him, and this entire discussion ends up being interrupted by a woman who claims that several men are causing havoc in her family's bar, and she wants Sabina to help. The blue-eyed Luria gets up immediately and promises to bring justice to the woman and her entire family. She orders her slaves to put an end to the plagues that were sabotaging the peace of her country, and obviously Cestus had to be included in the midst of all these combatants. They arrive at the scene and after some rude comments from the criminals, the two sides agree. Prepare to fight. The fight starts to break loose and Cestus contributes brilliantly, dropping the tape in several. However, at the moment when a leader of all these bandits attacks him, Cestus punches the guy, managing to knock the man down. However the guy gets up, and instead of trying to fight he forces his hand. Body against the boy, focusing completely on running away, Cestus tries to run after him, but the guy is fast, he runs away quickly, and unfortunately Cestus ended up losing a man among the crowd. Sabina is quite irritated by the fact that this guy ran away, but later she is informed that Emden got her into a situation by capturing the leader and dragging him across the street to her. At this moment, Emden reveals his irritation with the fact that Sabina uses outsiders to deal with this situation, telling her that she should have looked for him instead of trusting other slaves. In response to this, Sabina uses his affection against him, mocking Emden, even mentioning the promise they made in the past. Upon hearing this, Emden once again promises to fulfill everything he promised. We are taken to the increase in which he made such a promise. In the past, on Sabina's birthday, many lords and nobles came together to congratulate her, celebrating and commenting on her eternal beauty. At the time she even received a pony as a gift, suddenly Emden appeared wanting to congratulate her, and she just scolded him, asking him what kind of gift a mere slave like him could give her to make her happy. Emden opens his mouth, and promises to achieve a streak of 30 victories in her name, and that will be her gift. In Pompeii not a single gladiator managed to obtain more than 30 victories in a row, and Emden promised to surpass this record, and Sabina, being a woman dissatisfied with everything, says that all this is very little, and then says that she would grant him freedom if he achieved an unbeatable streak of 50 wins. Emden has been working tirelessly to get his 50 wins. Back to the present, Emden still needs to defeat two more opponents to achieve his goal, and Sabina reminds him that only one defeat will lead him to be at zero, responding by saying that he trusts himself and all his strength. Training. At that moment, a slave and companion of Cestus calls out Enum's tension for his dishonorable intentions, and in the heat of the moment he names himself and Cestus as those who defeated him, and all this will happen in the next tournament. Emden calls the two to fight while himself, but these animes end up being calmed, and everyone leaves in their own way, which is on foot, and while walking back to the training field, Cestus's companions and slaves advised him not to be so aggressive against a larger and stronger opponent. Yes, a much taller and much stronger person has much more of an advantage than the Cestus. He needs to figure out a way to beat a big, strong person with a great defense, like Emden. During dinner, a special feast is prepared for the young slaves. Yes, they will all be able to eat meat, a lot of protein to become big. This makes Cestus realize that he needs to work hard and increase his strength, and so that if this is possible, he has to eat, eat a lot. But he is a slave, fortunately, wearing the cape realizes this and offers to teach Cestus a mortal blow, if he is willing to apply it. Cestus seizes the opportunity with enthusiasm, however, at that moment Cestus is informed that he is being summoned by Sabina, as she wants something from him. When he arrives at her room, Sabina makes him a seductive offer to take him him to Roma, obviously she wants to buy him, and she wants him to be the carrier of her bags. Obviously this is a great offer, but this offer will end her life of fights. Cestus asks her why she didn't choose Emden as her first choice for this role, to which she describes that he is a mere brute without grace and no manners, and Cestus is much more ideal. He has already proven himself in battle and he is very young, so she can train him so that he has a more noble behavior. However, Cestus rejects this offer, telling the woman that he is not interested in being her toy, and that he is proud as a fighter, informing Sabina that his life is not as miserable as she thinks, informing her that he he has people who care about him and even friends. He also reveals that a long time ago he had an experience with the nobleman, who he also objected to being bought. This nobleman used him as a tool for loneliness, and the only way to survive was to run away.
away, he told Sabina that he would buy him with his own effort and using only his fists he would gain his freedom. Sabina felt offended by this, immediately saying that she wasn't alone and that he was an idiot. Why use such a thoughtful offer? She said he would never have an opportunity like this again. However the boy asked if he could leave now, as he had food to eat, Sabina told him to leave, frustrated. While Cestus ran back to eat, some minutes later during the bath, Sabina shamelessly flirts with her herbs to somehow increase her ego, which has just been rejected by a slave man. However, the fact that she was rejected by a slave causes hatred to begin to grow within her heart, which is why she called Emden into her room and demands that he give Cestus a good beating. Yes the next battle of the Emden will be against our skinny boy, and unfortunately for the little one Emden will give everything he has. All this in the name of Sabina, Emden happily agrees to all this, after all his dear and beloved Sabina is going to see him fight for the first time, and so he is very eager to kill Cestus, and now due to desires from Sabina, Cestus first fight in a tournament will be against Emden, and despite everyone saying that Cestus will be crushed, he continues towards his obvious defeat and is quite nervous, but still confident that he can win. Obviously he ignores any words of discouragement, he believes that if he keeps his training in his sharp eyes he will emerge victorious, the boy uses his remaining time to perfect his technique of keeping you, while Emden does the same, alone, training more and more, however with every minute that passes, Emden becomes irritated, after all he is jealous of Cestus, as Sabina is only going to see one of his fights because of this boy, who refused the wishes he she had, now Emden believes he is truly unbeatable, as he has finally managed to perfect his skill, where his defense is practically impenetrable, due to his intense training, he believes he can take punches all day long, and according to Emden himself, his arms are deadly weapons of combat, which have taken down the enemy with just one blow, and now with a lot of hatred, anger and jealousy, envy, and all the worst feelings a man could have, Emden is determined to get down the stone in Cestus, and after realizing that Sabina sees no value in him, Emden decided to finally fight for his own freedom, and not just fight to give Sabina a happy birthday, finally freeing himself from this fixation. By Sabina, in the arena, we see that everyone made very heavy bets for both boxers. Obviously the majority of bets were on Emden. The arena was full of conversations and excited people, everyone wanting to see a head fly. The two fighters prepared themselves, putting on their respective costumes, and before the fight, Sabina was smiling, being quite happy with your here the Cestus will take. So we see the habit announcing Emden's arrival. The public sings the name of their favorite boxer, Emden, Emden, ugly as hell, wow, very ugly. After never witnessing his defeat, they all had high hopes that their CG man would win. We see that Emden's arm protectors are quite unique, being basically a hack life, and Zuffer explains to his students that the arm protectors that Emden is wearing are specially made to resist heavy and fast attacks, but he also wonders how Emden will attack his opponent with these protections. Soon after we see the arrival of the sky and a scene announced to the entire arena, the boy is excited and determined to win. Despite the odds being against him, suddenly the crowd starts to scold Emden when he is fighting against a skinny child opponent, accusing him of picking his opponents just to get a higher record, yet Emden blatantly ignores all these comments. He knows he's facing a child, but it's obvious that he didn't plan this. Yes, it's all Cestus' fault. So we see the two boxers clenching their fists and positioning themselves to fight. Emden feels dishonored because the crowd ridicules him for fighting against a very easy opponent, while Cestus tries not to let Emden's size get him down and remains firm. Try and keep your confidence. So we see the referee waving his arm and so the match begins. Emden's steel protections have proven to be highly efficient, as Cestus is unable to damage his enemy's arms due to this steel protection, and this puts the skinny boy in a difficult situation, and Emden is aware of this, once again stating his thoughts that all Cestus has to offer is his cute appearance and the appearance of a sweet young man. However, Cestus increases the speed of his attacks, throwing one punch after another without stopping, being quite fast and agile, just waiting for a simple opening so that he can deliver a fatal blow. Finally, Emden is unable to keep up with the attack. The boy's speed, being completely surprised by the smaller boy's resistance, but surprise wasn't just what he had. He also received a blow to the jaw and ends up being knocked to the ground. The entire audience cheers, being surprised by the fall of the invincible champion, and Sabina doesn't know what to say, she can't believe the fact that Emden can be defeated, however, Emden stands up, now having more respect for his enemy, accepting that the smallest is worthy. He positions himself with that appealing fighting posture of his, so the battle restarts and Cestus ends up forgetting to breathe during his fury of punches. When he catches his breath, he realizes that attacking Emden at full speed is a temporary strategy, and that this will not lead to victory, so the second fight between the two boxers continues, and Emden throws a few punches at Cestus, quite aggressively, but carefully, leaving no gaps for the boy to take advantage. Cestus remains balanced, keeping a certain distance from his enemy so that he is not fatally hit. Finally Emden manages to manipulate Cestus in the direction he wanted, and delivers a final blow, which Cestus is unable to defend against. And this set of Emden's exclusive moves shocked everyone, including Zuffer. After all he used an ancient form of boxing, Cestus falls to the ground and after being hit, but he gets up with difficulty, believing that he can't give up and he has to win this battle, however his sense of balance is off, luckily this is an anime, and the Cestus is standing, however now is a perfect
perfect opportunity for an Emden to finally end the match. He is just smiling in a disturbing way and not even moves. The Cestus takes this as a provocation, believing that an Emden is toying with him. But few in the crowd realize that an Emden plans to deal a mortal blow to the boy, offering no mercy. The Cestus decides to defend himself by attacking, filling a Emden of punches. This is exactly what Emden wants, as he believes that the more Cestus fights, the better his victory will appear in the end. Zuffer worries about Cestus, as he tries to find out what Emden is planning for his student. After all, Emden is hiding behind his smile and his impenetrable defense. Cestus tries to attack Emden's stomach, distracting him with the Akas on top, and suddenly he bends down to hit Emden's stomach, but without knowing he falls into Emden's trap, and ends up receiving a punch right in the neck from above. Of his body, this being a relentless blow, which was applied without any sign of mercy, Emden had sworn never to use this technique again, but now the mess was personal, and he wanted to eliminate Cestus, and the move he just used is called Decapitator, and he has already killed two opponents in the past using this move. After doing so Emden raised his fist in a sign of victory. Without any hope that Cestus would get up, all the Cestus slave campers and even Zuffer encouraged him to get up. As the boy was unconscious in the arena and during a state of sleep the Cestus awakened. All its power all year round. Cestus heard his companions in the background, but the sky for him was becoming starry. He was almost dying and out of nowhere he recovers and gets up. However he is completely lost. He doesn't know who his enemy is. He doesn't know why is he in the arena and why is he being attacked. Yes, after a very strong concussion a human being can end up temporarily losing his memories and knowing that losing a fight means his death. The boy tells the referee that he wants to continue the fight so Emden attacks continuously determined to win this soon. And the situation doesn't look good for Cestus as he doesn't remember some things that just happened. For Cestus at that moment it's as if he had just woken up and suddenly he enters the battlefield. Like this when Emden lands a palm strike Cestus is fully believed that he will die if he doesn't win. His previous memories flash before his eyes instantly as he is knocked down again. But with a painful war cry he rises once more, filling the crowd of spectators with fun. Zuffer despite the obvious odds against his student, provokes Cestus to continue, remembering that secret blow they trained, and if he if you don't use it, you won't leave this arena alive. Cestus remains firm and raises his fists once again to continue a battle that doesn't seem to have an end. So Cestus finally manages to put in his mind the famous blow that is capable of knocking out a big person that he trained with Zuffer. Yes now this is his last resort. He looks at Emden with determination. The spectators seeing all the delay in this fight they start to scold Emden for having so much trouble with his little opponent. Even Sabina agrees with the public and she wonders if Emden is really going against the boy. She doesn't understand what is happening. But Emden looks at her and with just one look he shows that he is trying his best. But the boy really is good. The famous decapitator from Pompeii should have completely knocked out Cestus. And the fact that the boy was able to get up is not part of his plans. Out of nowhere the scene cuts to a small slave asking his friends why Cestus continues to resist. How he is able to get up instantly and can receive a mortal blow. Despite having such a fragile appearance he receives the answer that your body even though it is small is quite flexible and very soft so your body is capable of distributing pressure throughout the body as for instant recovery this is due to the fact that the cardiopulmonary functions are fully operational even after having received that blow cestus is a very healthy boy and with his body functioning at 100 percent his blood is able to obtain fresher oxygen and all of this ended up allowing cestus to recover immediately after receiving a seemingly fatal injury the match continues and emden slowly approaches cestus dragging his feet across the river without creating an opening for the boy. Once again he adopts his low stance to attack the Cestus, who receives him head on, remembering Zuffer's words to face death with his head held high, so he manages to dodge the initial attack, but loses his balance and stumbles, but he he doesn't fall before landing a punch on Emden's side, thus preventing him from using that dangerous arm of his. Emden does his best to hold back his expression of pain, but Zuffer managed to realize that the punch Cestus gave broke the guy's ribs, yes Cestus had already landed a punch right in that exact spot before, and now with this second blow it's very unlikely that Emden's rib is broken and the guy is holding back his pain. This greatly increases Cestus' chances of winning, and now there are a lot of people shouting Cestus' name. Even though it's a very difficult name to pronounce, while some people are cursing Emden, after all they bet a lot of money on him, Sabina is getting irritated with how long the match is taking. But the fact that couldn't be denied is that it was incredible to see such a weak-looking boy holding his own against Emden, who are the undefeated champions of Pompeii, and that as the fight continues, the public's preference ends up turning to Cestus, after all the boy is giving his soul in this battle. In the middle of the crowd we see a guy with a crooked nose, worried about Cestus, and this guy was part of a herd of young slaves. He remembers being tormented by hunger every day during his childhood, not being able to speak or express yourself. On a certain day it was announced that a certain very rich person was wanting to buy a slave. At the time, he didn't understand anything that was being said because he was just very hungry, but at a certain moment the eyes of all the children lit up when an angel appeared in front of them. This angel was actually Sabina, a very beautiful, and she quickly explained to the slaves that those who were chosen by her would not face difficulties. All the boys remained captivated by her voice and appearance.
despite not understanding a single word that came out of her mouth however everything changed when she said that only one boy would be chosen and this ended up triggering a tragedy among the boys all of them they started punching and hitting each other willing to eliminate everyone so that only the winner could go with sabina at the time this guy didn't even have a crooked nose and because he was quite tall he managed to make it to the end of this fight being alone in a fight against emda sabina watching this whole fight somehow started to like everything that and it was at this time that the little girl started to be shaped to have these kind of dark thoughts that she likes to manipulate others during the fight the tallest guy would have won but emden headbutt him and broke the guy's nose leaving the guy's nose crooked for the rest of his life and he with his broken nose surrendered and that changed completely to the stone with the crooked nose and some time later after emden was welcomed he also ended up being welcomed but not for a life of combat but rather as a slave who received education and lives a very good life he recognizes that he does not have the courage and perseverance like a fighting slave so cestus eternal bravery activates a certain warmth in his heart and as a result of all this he stands up and cheers for Cestus out loud at the same time. Many people in the audience are rooting for the skinny boy and now Emden's movements are much slower due to his injury which gives the skinny boy the opportunity to hit his ribs taking advantage of Emden's pain. Even so, he manages to push the boy back. In a desperate attempt to win this battle, Emden changes his stance and sends out a threatening work which makes even Cestus hesitate but using far shouts encouraging him to continue as the Emden is just trying to buy time to resolve his pain and get air into his lungs. Due to his broken rib he can barely breathe thus exchanging blows after blows. The boxers keep their eyes fixed on each other, each one doing their best in the battle. Emden forces a combined attack of three blows on the boy, which the boy manages to dodge perfectly, completely losing his movements and even managing to give one new, now causing Emden to start bleeding. Confidence grows within Cestus as he devises a plan to finally end the match. However, this atmosphere changes suddenly. When Cestus starts to bleed from his forehead, the blood seeps into one of his eyes, putting him at a great disadvantage by being blind in one eye. And this is terrible because he needs all his precision to carry out his attacks and at that moment Emden starts to say that a fight is not just about skill to win a battle sometimes you have to be a prey to luck and that blood leaking from Cestus forehead is Emden's luck shouting so that he wins his battle unfortunately at that time there were no methods to end a bleeding on the forehead easily the blood continues to flow passing through Cestus eyes now Emden plans to use his decapitator again and Cestus plans to use his deadly move which Zuffer taught him as he only has the resistance to give a few more blows so screaming a lot the two boxers launch themselves at each other each determined to put an end to their opponent once and for all. So Emden makes his blow, and the skinny boy counts on his speed to be able to catch an Emden in a perfect position. Yes, Cestus turned his body, placing himself in a position right behind Emden, thus avoiding the decapitating blow of the face, and then hitting Emden's neck with his first mortal blow. A blow that hits the back of the person's head, cutting off the person's neural activity. This blow is perfectly applied, and the crowd starts shouting Cestus' name. When he finally manages to knock an Emden off the ground, everyone believes it is a miracle. The fact that a mere skinny child could defeat a professional fighter like Emden. Cestus was happy to have won and Sabina demands that Emden get up. She keeps asking him if he wants to embarrass him by lying in the arena looking defeated. After everything that is the console, it is not possible for him to lose to a skinny boy and once again he issues an order for him to get up from the floor. However, that's not how things work. Even though Emden tries to get up, he can't and so Cestus is declared the winner of this battle. Guys, this type of video takes a lot of work to do. If you want a continuation by please leave a like and also subscribe to the channel here to continue watching more videos like this.